Hey, TCS viewers, Chris Nichols here from the Camera Store for an After Dark episode. We haven't done one of those in a while. Now, Jordan Drake will be joining me shortly. I mean, normally he's here, we have the whole conversation together, but uh, well, as you can see also, it's not very dark. I mean, the great thing about living in Alberta, being so far north, although our winters are absolute <laughs> our summers are beautiful and long. We get sunlight all day. Uh, so play along, pretend it's dark, even though it's not. Now, you know, Jordan and I, we are, we're well loved now from you guys, and we appreciate it for doing gear reviews. But we thought we'd do something different tonight. We thought, why not talk about firmware? Because firmware is one of these things that's really underappreciated. And I really see it as back in the day with SLRs, firmware was primarily to fix bugs. You know, these cameras would come out, they have all sorts of issues, and firmware revisions were just to fix those issues, which shouldn't have been present in the first place. But now with the cameras available today, firmware actually unlocks and opens some exciting potential and a lot of new features. So we feel it's worth talking about. So join us tonight, we're gonna to talk about firmware and what it does for your camera at home. Now, one of the primary examples of how firmware can be such a big difference to a camera is with the Fuji X-T1. We had multiple revisions with countless changes, which I want to talk about, but what we wanted to do is we wanted to test a new version firmware against the original X-T1. So thanks, Fuji, first off, for getting us the brand new version for firmware in this camera. We put it head to head with the X-T1 with the original firmware, uh, no updates done whatsoever so we could see the changes. Now there's so many updates that Fuji did on the X-T1, but some of the big noticeable ones, uh, giving things like manual control and video mode, opening up Chrome profile as a color profile, allowing things like electronic shutters and fixing flash things, taking away shutter sound options, and so much more. The X-T1 also had some uh, autofocusing updates. Uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing. We've had people literally take their Fuji cameras from the first versions, come after a, an update from firmware and say it's like a brand new camera. And of course the camera hasn't changed that much, but the experience to the user, to the owner, is colossal. It really makes them appreciate it. Especially things like autofocus. The X-T1, you know, when we first tested it, we personally found that it was good but not great. And a lot of people disagreed with us, probably because by this point they'd already been updating the firmware. Now version four firmware update, it primarily focused on autofocusing capabilities with the X-T1. We had a company picnic, you know, throwing around Frisbees and jumping around, having a good time. So we thought, why don't we take both X-T1s and test it out in this situation with autofocus and continuous shooting. Uh, the results were actually pretty amazing. We were impressed. I mean, looking at the original version X-T1, we actually had a very low hit rate to get sharp photos. But the modern updated X-T1 with version four, Every shot was bang on. We had very few miss. We noticed that it hesitated less, predicted better, followed subjects, especially when they're coming right at the camera. Very, very impressive. Now, another thing that they changed was zone focusing, and that did really help to track moving subjects around the frame. And another cool feature that actually is very useful, especially when you can do studio portrait photography, Fuji's added this eye detect focusing. You know, often when we're trying to shoot people's faces and get the eyes in focus, which of course is so critical, we would do things like as small a point as possible, try to get it in the eye, but often your camera's gonna focus on eyelashes or cheekbones or nose, and if you're shooting wide apertures, you're not gonna quite get that eye sharpness. Well, what the Fuji does, is it literally brings up a box around the face, detecting it, and then brings up a smaller box, detecting the eye. I shot pictures of Jordan here, you can see where he's sort of quartered away, so one eye is distinctly closer to me than the other and you can see it picks up that first eye right on the actual iris itself very effective and very very easy so these are all nice features so you know I guess what I'm getting at is you couple all of these updates menu changes electronic shutters being added manual control the video to make it usable cinematically as much as a Fuji camera can be anyways and then really enhancing the autofocus you're taking an X-T1 and in some ways okay yeah you're making it to an almost brand new camera but the really most important thing for me in this regard is a Fuji user buying a camera knows that over the years to come, their camera is going to be updated, it's going to be kept current, and they're not going to have this envy where they're thinking, oh, I want to get a new camera, my camera's old now that it's only three months old, I don't want it anymore. You know that you're going to be taken care of, and that really breeds loyalty, and that's going to work great for Fuji. 
All right, so it's finally dark, yeah. at least in here. It's still bright outside. Yeah. But uh, Jordan Drake here, yeah. good to have you back. It's, it's been good a long to be time. back, actually. Mm. I've missed doing this. Absolutely. So I think we should start talking about the firmware, the history of firmware. Yeah. You know, where it came from. Okay. I mean, kind of leading up to this in the early days of digital, they realized that firmware could be used to address little bugs, you know, sure. incompatibilities with different memory cards. Yeah. You know, we'd have to add three obscure languages to the camera a yeah, little while after. Yeah, but they rarely camera. updated or did anything significant. I exactly. Mean, a couple exceptions, but yeah. you know, for me, a big part of the early firmware that was really telling was hackers going in, you know, GH right. hacks, 5D hacks, yeah. unlocking raw video or higher bit rates, right, it's right. crazy stuff. Yeah, and I think that's a big part of what really spurred things mm -hmm. is there was this public perception that hey, wait a second, these manufacturers aren't giving us everything that these cameras are capable of. And why of. not? If it obviously doesn't take a whole team to do it, anybody right. could do it. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, I think you know, with Fuji, what's great is they started doing this, and it makes people appreciate owning a Fuji camera. Yeah, I think Fuji really started it with the X100. Mm. Um, you know, it was a really important camera for Fuji, put them back on the map. Sure. But they had some issues, it was slow. It, initially, yeah, it was yeah. kind of a buggy camera, which we talked about in our initial review of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We were like, it's pre-production, I'm sure these will be ironed out. The production camera came out, had the same issues. Exactly. So initially it was bug fixes, but then what we started to see after it was really interesting where they started adding really compelling features. Well, and, and they'd listen, yeah. you know? People would be like, damn, we want faster autofocus in the camera. And you'd be like, okay, here okay, you go. Okay, here we go, yeah, this yeah. is gonna track better. But then when the X100S came out, historically the way digital camera makers, I think, have been able to push new product is those software fixes and they make you pay for it, you yeah. know? You want the better <laughs> autofocus, you have to buy the new camera. X100S comes out, hey, it's got better autofocus, but look, now your X100 does too. Yeah, I mean, that's the crazy thing. I think people are just feeling cheated. So yeah. these are great moves. And we're seeing other companies do this now too, which is fantastic. Yeah, it's really starting to develop. So Samsung's a good example here too. You know, yeah. I remember we did our first review on the X1. We liked it, but I yeah. found the autofocus was not everything it was cracked up to be. Right. And a lot of people started crapping on me. Yeah. And I told you I knew it because guess what they do? Yeah, immediately new firmware comes out for that. Big I spent, uh, yeah, we bitch about the video a lot of the <laughs> functionality of it. Sure. Bam, immediately everything we've been complaining about is, I exactly. mean, not rectified specifically, but it's definitely improved. They're listening. Yeah, and then last week we post our NX500 video, uh, bitching about the autofocus and video <laughs> functionality, and then immediately we see Samsung has just sure. improved autofocus and video functionality. Well, absolutely, and you know, I mean, people were looking for professional features, better uh, cinema profiles, yeah. uh, better controls, autofocus, and you know, it's not just, making things faster or quicker, mm -hmm. it's also in a lot of cases revamping entire autofocusing systems. Yeah. Boxes available, points available, I mean this yeah, is Yeah, the interfaces stuff. are seeing huge tweaks Absolutely. as well. I know in the case of the Samsungs, I, like I admit the autofocus on it actually saw some really nice improvements. Yes. On the video side, I was really looking forward to test it because I, I liked the image from the Samsung in terms mm -hmm. of you know the sharpness and, and the colors were actually fairly good though I found them a bit you know bit much very oversaturated. Right. So I was looking forward to the DR. The mistake I made is I didn't really test it. I was like, oh, we have Cinema DR. It'll be I'll flat. shoot on it. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be flat. We'll yeah. play with it a little. And it is such a punchy profile now. Yeah, and uh, you've got to go in and tweak it further. Yeah. And I mean. To you me, shouldn't have to do that. To me, if it's a flat cinema profile, the manufacturer should recognize that you know what you're doing and you're going to be playing with those files. Yeah. Uh, where with this, it felt like, I think a lot of these companies are scared of the consumer response. People will go to their new video profile and you know when they shoot a flat profile, they'll be like, oh God, this is terrible, my camera sucks. Right, right, right. But it's a lack of understanding. And I mean, in the terms of like Sony bringing out S-Log or something, they recognize, okay, some people aren't gonna know how to use this tool, but then they'll move on and use a standard use profile. Use profile, absolutely. Uh, so in the case of the Samsung, I was really underwhelmed with it. If mm. I were to do it again, I'd crank everything back. But again, what's the point of the software update? The other thing is the continuous autofocus on the NX1. Um, <laughs> Still you know, needs I, work. I really thought, this. let's see if I can put a camera, because it's just you looking at the camera talking, put it in face detect and see if I never have to focus an episode. That was right. the original test. And we shot four scenes with that, and I realized it was jerking in and out of focus constantly. Yeah. It looked terrible. I couldn't trust it. We went back to manually focusing. Now here's the thing. Obviously, Jordan's upset. You can see that, and I'm kind of fearful uh, myself. But What's great about the, the, mm -hmm. the world today in this camera industry is we're complaining about it right now and other people have these yeah. similar talks and then Samsung 
And other companies are going to make note of that and be like, well, Jordan and Chris are angry. Let's yeah, fix that. Yeah, because we're really important. We're so a really big deal. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, very well. I, I give it three weeks. We're going to have a fix. Yeah. And they're going to say, we fixed it. Fist fa uh, fixed face detect for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I do hope that's the case. One thing I do find, though, is it seems like the smaller companies are more ambitious with their firmware. Yeah. And honestly, I think it's because they have the most to lose with the sure. professional audience and the most to gain. That's funny, though, because you bought a Sony A6000, which you love. Great uh, and, of course, you're a videographer and it has yeah. some capabilities. But you know, even Jordan was saying, oh, you know, I'd like a little bit higher data rate. There's things yeah. you can do. And lo and behold, yeah. what do they do, Jordan? They brought out XAVCS for the <laughs> Sony A6000, which is something I've been like tweeting at, you know, Sony forever. Like, all these other cameras have it. They delivered it. And yeah, I mean, it's not a cinematic camera. Okay. But my home videos are <laughs> truly spellbind. Well, and you got, again, the A6000, it is a great camera. I mean, you could argue it's a near perfect camera, but. Uh, it's an older camera by digital standards, so again, yep. it's good to see that these companies are not just saying, oh, forget that, we'll put out something new and, and everyone will forget about it. Yep. No, they're saying, look, we're going to keep supporting this. It's Absolutely. Great. So, you know, we've got the NX1 here. Samsung's yep. been doing some good stuff. Sony, I mean, we're going to talk about that, but they have been doing some good firmware upgrades. And totally, some especially too. on the consumer line, yeah. yeah, regular updates. But then it's interesting, because then you think, okay, well, Canon and Nikon are, are still around, okay? Yeah. I mean, as large as still around. They're still far and away the two biggest players. Yeah, and, and we're still not seeing these big changes, and there's nothing mechanical about an SLR that keeps it from being able to benefit from firmware upgrades. No, and it's funny, because those are the makes that are getting hacked right now, yeah. because I think Canon and Nikon are being pretty complacent with them. I'm um, with the 5Ds, yeah. you saw Magic Lantern. Uh, Icons are now starting to get hacked to open up what you know they're actually capable yeah, of doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, they're really. Can you think of like a major firmware upgrade that added cool new features for Canon or Nikon? Yeah, Canon? I mean, the 5D Mark II got a few updates, right. mic control, but again, you're going to be recording on on that era of cameras separately, anyways. Right. 24 frames per second, you know. Yeah. Well, and I mean, those are things that should have been, like the camera should not have recorded straight 30p right out of the exactly. Gate. You know, those were fixes for problems with the camera, mm -hmm. and that's. I mean, that's the one thing that really scares me when it comes to firmware is I'd hate. To to see us get to a point where manufacturers are pushing out unfinished cameras out the sure. door, you know, yeah. and saying, oh, it's okay, we'll fix it in firmware. And I mean, we, we definitely saw an issue with that earlier this year. Like, I love the FS7. Sure. I think it's like the best camera for under $10,000 right now. But when that thing first shipped, it was incredibly buggy and yeah. actually still had some serious issues until version two, which came out on it. Like after we finished our review, they took care of the Magenta cast. Um, sped up the operation quite a bit, mm -hmm. added Cinema 4K, all these things that really should have been there in the first place that we knew it was capable. Uh, absolutely. Of. I mean, I'll be devil's advocate, or I don't know. I mean, I'll support the big companies, I guess, <laughs> and, and be like, you know, of course, they, they, it's competitive. They want to get products out at certain yeah. shows, and and I know what you're saying. And the fact is, yeah, we're gonna get cameras coming out that are fairly buggy, and uh, yeah, you know, it's unfortunate because it, does it dampen your your sales at the start, or does it? piss people off, you know, yeah. and they're like, look, this camera's no good. I don't know, but yeah. at least on the, on the happy side of it, at mm. least they are fixing these cameras later on. They, they are doing that, but mm. uh, my major concern is, you know, if someone comes in who's not technically inclined, half of our customers probably don't even know that firmware exists. And those people yeah. are going to be left with an unfinished camera that they bought based on the promise of what's coming that they're never going to take advantage of. Absolutely. It, it's kind of a scary potential. Well, we jumped on that early because here at the camera store, we actually notified our customers yeah. uh, you know, on our mailing list, hey, just so you guys know, yeah. these are the new firmware these... updates. Because it really is an important thing, and it can really make or break a camera. Yeah, and I've missed plenty of important firmwares. You know? mm -hmm. so, and I'm in the industry, so for a regular person, it's going to be tough to stay on top. Of. Well, let's flip it back to a positive note, okay? okay? Yeah, let's not end on a downer. <laughs> the Panasonic GH4, I mean, this had huge updates and also huge updates to come. I right. know everybody there at home, you're like, yes. when is it coming, when, when is, it? is it coming? By the way, I Jordan's know. about to lose his <laughs> uh. <laughs> I don't know when it's coming. They gave it to me early. Yeah. Um, and honestly, it feels finished, the vlog. Like, we're yeah. shooting on vlog right now. We're talking about uh, vlog. Yeah. Yes. You can see it's quite flat. And before we skip it, I mean, I do want to say, like, the things Panasonic did for anamorphic shooters and their other updates before that were fairly important Absolutely. updates. But now, I mean, the vlog really makes it a completely new camera. Yeah, I mean, again, remember, in digital dog years, the GH4 is like, 
80 years old, right. you know? I mean, it's an old Which camp. is what, 18 months? <laughs> yeah, 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 18 time. months, yeah. right? So yeah, it's it's great. And we've even said it many times, it's like it's breathing new life into this camera. Yeah, and it's taken me a little while to learn to work with it. And I want to explain kind of what happened in the last couple of videos, because we saw a ton of comments on yeah, it. Yeah, right. Um, the Panasonic G7 review, which I shot in uh, vlog, that was really a demonstration of how much dynamic range was there. Also, sure. I like the, the look of flatter footage. I seem to be the minority <laughs> there. Um, but it was to show how much information was contained in that where, you know, with your standard profiles on the GH4, it would just throw that stuff away. Exactly. The second one, you know, I kind of did something a little crunchier, a little more like contrasty. Like a Q video, we pushed a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. I liked it, yeah. Uh, and yeah, the more I learned to work with it, the more I'm liking it. Here's what I found really fascinating about it, though, because, I, you know, I do like to use LUTs a lot. They mm -hmm. speed things up. You just drop them on your project and you keep working. Uh, the V-Log really responds well to Ari Alexa LUTs. Yeah. It seems to be a very similar curve, very similar color. Uh, and that's great, because I didn't want to wait forever for a bunch of GH4 uh, V-Log LUTs when this thing actually ships, you know, whenever that may be. Uh, but once it does show up, it means there's going to be a ton of profiles immediately available, so it's not mm -hmm. going to be that difficult to work with. No, and honestly, it's not that difficult to work with even now. I yeah. mean, it's working out very well. It's it, it's a big change. It's been great. I love working with it. I mean, you've got to be aware. Your shadows are going to be noisy when you're using, sure. you know, a sensor with this lower sensitivity and pushing it this hard. Yeah. But as long as you know that going Get into it. Get it to the right of the histogram, crunch some of those blacks back down. That helps quite a yeah. bit. But to me, it's a whole new camera. You know, we were out shooting on the street with A7S's because I wanted that dynamic range. Yep. But and it's 3200 yeah. native ISO. It's, <laughs> you know, so I'm stacking, like, you know, start with five stops, MD, and eventually, you know, we'll crank our way up from there to it 10 stops or whatever. Uh, you basically didn't touch the GH4 for a long time yeah. after initially testing it. Yeah, and when we were in the field, it, we're using it again. Yeah, and it's all because of that V-Log. So mm -hmm. it really is, you know, if this was a brand new model, which is selfishly what people would have done a few years ago, I would have ran out and picked that one up because it's such an improvement. Now they're giving it to us free of charge, and it's solely because of this new culture Absolutely. of firmware. It's going to be interesting to see if it really spurns a, a a new sales wave, but certainly you can be sure that any GH4 users that have been maybe I don't know upset in the last year and a half, or yeah. or maybe envious, like, like are just like no, we're good. Yeah, like Levi <laughs> Hallwell, who's now very happy. He yeah. almost went A7S, so it's pretty funny. Um, hopefully, you guys find this interesting. I mean, firmware is just such a big part of today's world, yeah. and it's it's really direct connection from the companies to you to support mm -hmm. you guys. So we've been appreciating it. It's, yeah. a, it's a factor. I think it's very very important. Yeah, I mean, if there's any stuff you guys guys feel like we missed or anything that you feel like we should run back and touch sure. on, please comment below. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Tweet badger it. us on Twitter. Don't yeah. ask me when Vlog L is coming. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, exactly. Uh, check out that stuff on Instagram. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you again soon. All right, see you soon.